You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled How to Uberize Oil and Gas Field Services Using Digital Technology. Is there a way to apply digital tools to improve supply chain collaboration in oil and gas field services? Absolutely, and here's how. If you've been a frequent follower of my time in Australia living amongst the LNG projects, you'll recall my ongoing interest, that is, obsession, with the need for oil and gas upstream players to think more like factory managers and less like big game hunters. Now that I'm back in Canada, I'm hearing more and more about how the Canadian oil and gas sector needs to reset its cost structures to survive in a low oil price future. Producers here have concluded that we're in for low prices for the foreseeable future, and that every aspect of the existing oil and gas business model needs a rethink. The short-term cost reduction tactics have run their course, and now more substantial changes are going to be necessary. One senior IT leader told me for the first time in his career, that is over a 25-year period, operations was finally calling and asking for help with digital. Normally, operations tend to view corporate IT types as not relevant to the day-to-day task of producing barrels, but perhaps no longer. Oil and gas is finally concluding that it will be digitally impacted, maybe not in the dramatic ways like financial services, and maybe not with urgency. But it is a kind of a long fuse followed by a series of small bangs. Now, if you were able to get a tour of an oil and gas field operator's control room, and I've been through a few in my time, you'd see tons of technology devoted to monitoring the wells in the associated kit. That is to say, it's all about managing the asset. Good operators can even turn on and off wells from a central location. But the interface with the service company to deliver a service to the well is still a manual exercise that hasn't materially changed in decades, reflecting when labor was cheap, services were inconsequential, and mobilization costs irrelevant. Suppliers today are quick to point out the shortcomings of this conventional approach to field uh, management. Labor is now very costly relative to hydrocarbon prices. Mobilization costs are substantial, and the services are pricey. There's little to no true coordination between the operators and their assets and with the service companies and their assets to optimize overall service. It's overly reliant on lightweight tools, Excel and telephones, to coordinate service delivery. And it doesn't scale well, which is a problem, particularly with the steady growth of unconventional fields. Operators can't keep tight track of the performance of suppliers, so poor performance isn't corrected quickly enough. And suppliers charge what they can get away with because they're not subjected to the kind of scrutiny and performance that the automotive industry applies to its suppliers. For instance, should that job take two hours or eight hours? Who knows? Suppliers also have lots of horror stories about showing up at site, only having to demobilize because the previous service provider wasn't done yet. The manual approach doesn't have any true ability to optimize the match of services to wells needing services, which drives high cost. And then last, contracting models are very traditional in comparison to other sectors and do not permit reverse auctions, swaps, and other clever contracting methods. Even building up the service order takes a significant manual effort to assemble all the required data about the well, the service need, the landowner, and so on. There's little of the kinds of collaboration tools you'd encounter in manufacturing. Now, how would we try to digitize field services? Well, there are several powerful digital changes that are making sector reinventions, even in obscure areas like field services, possible and within reach. First, the internet is now at a critical mass, and all the stakeholders involved, that's operators, landowners, regulators, and service companies, are now on the digital grid. Computing horsepower is abundant and cheap. Smartphones today have the capabilities of the original supercomputers. Storage is cheap, too, and available in the cloud at ridiculous prices. My personal available storage on cloud service is in the gigabytes, and it's effectively free. Mathematics has developed sufficiently that solving complex problems like scheduling and optimal routing are now routine. Sensors have fallen in price, which is giving rise to the Internet of Things. Vehicles, equipment, tools, wells, and even people can be tracked in real time. And best of all, we've learned that if we can make something digital, including services, it hops onto Moore's Law and starts evolving at light speed. So what would be good field service management? Well, if we were to rethink oil and gas field services in today's low commodity price environment, what would you want by way of capability? Well, first, you'd want to provide good visibility to the aggregate demand for services across the full asset base to help identify immediate optimization needs, bottlenecks, and problem areas. You'd want to be able to identify changes over time to improve management decisions about the assets, that's the wells and the facilities, and their designs. You'd want to integrate geographic data, that is maps, 
to help managers visualize the business and capture data accurately about service delivery so that you improve overall quality. You'd want to coordinate the service calls so that you can effectively manage the impact on landowners. And you'd want to tightly align operations with contracted maintenance so you reduce well downtime. Then, of course, you'd want to be able to scale up over time without scaling up the resources involved in the coordination to keep your costs in line. This would help minimize the impact on existing investment in systems so that you reduce the implementation costs. And you'd want to enable a mobile workforce to eliminate all the offline data exchanges. Next, you'd want to change the site service skill so that you lower the unit costs for services. You'd want to improve the productivity of suppliers to lower their per well costs. You'd want sharper selection of suppliers for jobs to align the best suppliers on the most important facilities. And you'd want to coordinate service calls across service companies to eliminate wait times at the wells between services. I'm sure there's many more characteristics, but these are the ones that I can think of. Now, really, is there a need that the business model or solution be purpose-built for the oil and gas sector? Probably not. Knowing what the services are is a record, is a, that are required for a well is a core competence, but frankly, the coordination aspect is not. And many other industries feature a similar kind of problem, including power and utilities, water and wastewater management, and so on. Is there a better solution? Well, I think so. What if the oil and gas industry turned this field services problem over to its own digital to natives, that is, the young engineering talent? What would they come up with? More Excel? A bespoke custom build? Probably not. They draw inspiration from Uber, Airbnb, iTunes, and Slack. They'd probably suggest a collaborative and innovative solution with the following features. Gas field service management would sit in the cloud so that no one has to pay for new hardware and can scale up quickly. It would be accessed by web browsers so that anyone can use it. It would be modern and it would work with any device so that no one needs to invest in new hardware. And it would roll out using app stores because that's quick and cheap. It would be in wide use so that the skills to operate and maintain it are low cost and don't lock everyone into something proprietary and closed. In other words, it might not be your standard oil and gas solution. It would be off the shelf so that it implements quickly. That is to say, you configure it, you don't actually code it. It would be completely open so that it integrates with all the existing software investments that are inside the oil and gas shop. It would provide one source of truth for all the participants, service providers, landowners, and operators. It would have the potential to be a platform for whole of industry, not just a single company, because the benefits to whole of industry are just so dramatically better. It would be able to meet the scale needs of oil and gas fields, that is, thousands of wells and pieces of equipment, and would have a low upfront cost consistent with the low commodity price environment that we're all in. It would be real time, like Uber is for taxi services, but for service orders, wells, equipment, and service companies, and it would provide visibility to detect bottlenecks, slack, errors, and overall capacity. And it would have to provide benefits to everyone, including the service providers who would want better asset utilization, operators who want their wells returned to service quicker, landowners who want better coordinated site visits, schedulers who want to automate routine work, dispatchers so that they have also automated dispatch, engineers who would get insight into better well design, IT who would lower its overall maintenance costs, and procurement, better supplier management, and lower prices. The next generation of oil and gas workers won't want to work for long in field services and operations unless this area is modernized using today's technologies. Well, show me the money. There are several innovative solutions out there that deliver on the challenges of field service delivery in oil and gas fields and meet many of the characteristics outlined above. One is a product called ServiceNow, a rather clever technology from California that's in wide use in oil and gas already, but just not this area of the business. ServiceNow solves the problems of managing high volumes of service requests and responding to those requests. It's a surprisingly common problem. Think about all the service desks and service centers out there fielding calls and inquiries, handling problems, diagnosing what to do, dispatching repairs or new kit, and making sure the focus is on the highest priority items, even handling surges of problems. My vision is to enable collaboration between players in a service chain, like a manufacturer, without having to replace all the existing ERP systems, inventory control, GIS, HSE, permitting land, and other systems. Even small service companies should be able to play. Are you keen to learn more? If you want a demonstration of my solution ideas using ServiceNow, just connect with me on LinkedIn and we can take it from there.
You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.